One of the things to also notice about uh, the terpenoids in this form is we're not using it as a drug. We're using it as an herbal blend or a complex chemical matrix, right? We have a whole lot of chemicals in there. That means the philosophy for treatment is different. Instead of finding one pure compound that has a limited number of things that you're treating, you have a broad spectrum of chemicals that has a large range of things that you're treating at the same time. Okay? That's a different philosophy because part of the philosophy in allopathy and homeopathy is that you don't give anything you don't absolutely need because you don't want to do harm. Okay? Now, the difference is, is that when you have a pure compound, it tends to knock your system out of balance. That's why you have more side effects. Whereas what we notice with the endocannabinoid system, which is really quite remarkable, is it's what they call a homeostatic system. Everything's flowing towards this high level of equilibrium. And what happens is if somebody gets knocked out of, yeah, out of balance this way, there's something down there ready to go to shove it back in the other way. If it bounces out this way, it brings it back. The other thing with a homeostatic system is there's all these other compounds that either directly improve the specific effect you want or indirectly support it, which I'll talk about. Um, you mentioned ACDC. Um, that happens to be one of my favorites of the high CBD strains. Uh, part of the reason is it's a very, very stable stream, uh, st uh, st uh, a very stable strain. Canatonic C6, unfortunately, has lots of problems. It keeps back regulating or, or, or backing into other phenotypes as you clone it and grow it out over time. ACDC always has somewhere in the 17 to 1 to 28 to 1 ratio of CBDA to THCA. And you notice that here's the THCA right here. Here's the CBDA, right? THC, CBD. Now, notice a couple more really important things with ACDC. We have a lot of mercing, okay? Mercine is very important for a lot of things in the body as an honorage. First off, it has a lot of the same effects, being a terpene and being a member of the terpenoid family. It does a lot of the same things that we attribute to THC and CBD, okay? But it does something else very, very special, which some of the cannabinoids do and certain other terpenes do, just not as well as mercine. And what that is is uh, one of the ways that the honorage helps indirectly is you have a partition between, say, the blood and the brain, and you have to get it from one spot to the next. Mercy lowers the resistance of the partition, allowing more of the chemical to flow into the brain cell where it can get to the CB1 receptor. Okay? So, what happens is there's actually an example that you can do on a recreational level if you want. That is, you take one of these strains that when you smoke it, it's what they call a creeper weed. It takes five, ten minutes to kick in. Try eating a half of a ripe mango, half to a full ripe mango, about 45 minutes to an hour before, so you have mercy already in your bloodstream. And what happens is, is that creeper weed doesn't take five or ten minutes. It goes into your bloodstream and into your brain immediately. Okay? So, it helps regulate that. Uh, another very important compound, doesn't happen to be on here, which is kind of sad, is, is uh, beta caryophylline. You find uh, beta caryophylline in things like black pepper. You find it in Thai basil. Uh, a number of places. It's certainly a major component in hops, essential oil. It makes about 20%. What's important about beta caryophylline? Well, we now know, as of some research recently published, that it does the same thing to the CB2 receptor for CBD, which tells me that if you want to get CBD to go into the CB2 receptor more effectively, by having beta caryophylline in the honorage, you improve its uptake, because that's what it does. Okay? Now, it turns out that one thing I don't show on here, this is an older report, we have newer ones with, with other things, is there's a twin. There's a lot of twins and cousins in, in these isomers, whether it's cannabinoids, terpenes. There's a twin to beta caryophylline. You know it as humulene. Its real chemical name is alpha caryophylline. See, they're twins. And they both work the same way. Um, notice that every single one of these that you see up here doesn't like bacteria. Some of them, like lemonine, also don't like fungus, very aggressively so. They tend to be anti-cancer, right? And at least three of these, the uh, pinene, myrcene, and lemonine, actually manipulate the psychoactivity. So there's, they're, doing, they're taking the THC and changing the high to give a different personality. Now, you've noticed this by going to different strains. You go to something like jack hair or super silver haze, um, you get a very energetic high. You get a very clear-headed high. It's very clear-headed, and you're very project-oriented. Wonderful to use for people with ADHD to get them to get work done. 
uh, what you, if you're smoking Super Silver Haze or, or Jack Hare, you're not sitting there doing video games, you're not sitting there doing a jigsaw puzzle. You might be painting the car, you might be out running a marathon, right? These are the sort of things you're doing. You're project oriented and you're very focused on it. Um, so that's some of the things. One more thing, by the way, that Mersine does, uh, which is really interesting for a lot of other reasons, is that when it's working with THC, if it's in a very, very small concentration, it doesn't do anything to the energetic effect. It's still there. But in high concentration, it flips that and makes it couch locky. It's not CBD or CBN that causes couch lock. As best as we know from all the studies we've done, it's mercing. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you some slides in a little while that'll explain that to you a little better, give you a better example. Basically, the rule of thumb that we see in the lab when we compare it to the patients we, that I work with and other people work with is if the mercing content on a lab report is less than 0.4%, it doesn't flip the energy and make it couch locky. But starting about a half a percent and working up, it gets progressively more couch locky. So something that has a half a percent mercing is slightly couch locky. Something like OG Kush, which I'm sure a lot of these folks out here know, is very couch locky. Of course, it also has about one and a half percent mercing in it. Uh, Blue Dream runs uh, one and a half, one and three quarter percent. That has a very sort of slowed down effect as well, right? Uh, this tells you something else. Uh, unfortunately, this means that when you want an energetic strain or you want a relaxed couch lock strain for night, using the word sativa and indica no longer have any medical validity. They have none. And the reason is, is that way back when, when we had only 50 land races and man hadn't started goofing with them, all the sativas had low mercing. All the indicas had high mercing. We're up to over 3,000 strains, and most of those are across, or not most, but a quarter of those are across between Neville's Haze and OG Kush, right? Energy in cat. So before long, we look at these strains in the lab, and we find that, you know, somebody says, oh, this is, this is initially a Kush. It's got to be a couch lock. We see no mercine, and we see it's very energetic when people smoke it. So if you're looking for the difference pharmaceutically between energy and a relaxed sensation for bedtime or something, you need to know the mercine content. If it's a half a percent or more, it's gravitating towards couch lock. Less than 0.4%, it's still energetic. <laughs>